Howdy fuckheads, welcome back to another CS2 video. This time I decided to do a little bit of, um, a little bit of fun, to say at least. This time I'm going to be delving into ideas that I have for CS2. Basically like replacing weapons and shit, like basically new weapon ideas. The way I'm approaching this basically is to try to make them to sort of like, um, have their own like unique little purposes and shit. I'm not just going to add like a weapon that has like, oh, this has this stat, this stat, and fucking whatnot. No, I don't have plans for that. <laughs> That's going to be extremely boring. It's like, oh, here's an assault rifle that is better than the M4, but shittier than the fucking AK or whatnot. I don't know. Instead, the way I'm going to be approaching this video is to simply make them unique to one another and actually have like their own small little purposes. Are these going to be balanced? No, of course not. But this is just a little bit of idea that I had in my mind that I thought, you know, would be somewhat interesting to uh, delve into. So, the first weapon that I have in my I in my head is to sort of replace the AUG and the, the SG-553. These weapons, I see it as a more unique weapons because they're the only assault rifle in the game that have the capability of aiming down the sights. And so I thought, well, wh wh why not have a different weapon that have a different purpose, instead of having a scoped uh, scope on the weapon. How about an underbell grenade launcher? An example being, let's talk about the OTS-14 Groza, one of my number one favorite assault rifles. Well, not number one, but my number one second favorite assault rifle in the world. So the way the weapon itself functions is you have an underbell grenade launcher that is you can either have it with uh, explosives or you can change it into flashbangs and molotovs and whatnot. It doesn't really matter. And you might be thinking, well, why can't I just simply have a grenade next to me? Like, in, in, in my back pocket. Well, that would be good, but hear me out on this. The grenade itself causes to instantly explode. Now, you might be thinking, hold on, that sounds a little bit overpowered. And you might be thinking, and that is correct. And so, uh, that was my first original idea. My first original idea is to make the uh, grenades themselves to instantly explode upon coming into upon like hitting something, but then I decided, now nah, that would be a little bit too much to handle. And so what I decided to do is balance it out, quote unquote. And so what I intentionally did is I made the explosion radius and the effectiveness of the grenades to, to be half, basically. The only reason I'm saying this is because you are able to shoot the grenades instantly. There's no like delay, there's no like warning, it just instantly goes. Say it, you shoot a grenade launch. Uh, say you shoot a grenade at a person and it hits them directly, basically. And so instead of dealing like 70 damage or 80 damage, like a normal grenade would do, instead it would do like maybe 40 to 50 or even less damage. The purpose of the underbarrel grenade launcher is to provide a more basically more y utility for you and your teammate. So instead of having to like fucking go through your inventory to whip out the smoke grenade or like some sort of different type of grenade for a specific scenario, you could just instantly shoot it out. But when you buy the rifle itself, you always have a grenade I inside of it. You don't need to buy another grenade in order to sort of have it prepared. But what you can do is buy a flashbang or a smoke grenade and replace the grenade inside with a different utility. And like I said, the effectiveness and the duration of these specific grenades are half, so if a flashbang like hits you directly in the face, instead of normally blinding you for like, what, 5-4 seconds, it only blinds you for like, a second of two. And then the explosion radius is much more smaller, the same thing with the smoke grenade, instead of being like a really large smoke that is capable of covering like, a shit ton of fucking places, it only covers like, some of it. It, like, the, 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 the size of the smoke is, like, reduced in half, and the duration of it is also reduced. So you have a grenade launcher that shoots out grenades far faster than just, like, like, you know, whipping it out. And it is capable of instantly shooting out. But how fast does it go? Well, just a basic, like, left click. I don't really have any plans on, like, maybe making it to where, you know, you can change, like, how far it goes or, like, where does it go and shit. But it, it shoots out, like, um, how you would normally throw it with the left click. So you have, an, you have a rifle that shoots out a grenade instantly without any warning. But people can hear it, though. There's, like, a loud thud indicating that there's, like, someone coming. And the rifle itself is kind of hard to really balance because I don't want to make the weapon really overpowered, but here's my suggestion. Make it so where the rifle is capable of one-shotting enemies only at close range. Maybe like five, five, no, 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 at least like three meters or like five meters. 
but make it so where the rate of fire is well slower than the FAMAS but slightly faster than the M4S it's like instead of being like 667 rate of fire like the FAMAS and the M4 has make it like somewhere maybe 625 630 or something like that and then the magazine capacity I also am thinking of making it maybe 25 or at least 30 to say at least the recoil I'm sort of thinking of like a mixture of the AUG and the FAMAS basically like a mixture between these two basically that's what my personal idea so you have a rifle that is not exactly great but not exactly bad either but the, the the effectiveness of it comes from the grenade launcher itself that allows you to sort of like molly a specific corridor instantly or like flash someone away smoke it off whatever like normally whenever you dink someone in the head you have to take it takes like half a second to whip out your grenade and then throw it out meanwhile with the grenade launcher it shoots out instantly and the detonation time is also half i don't know the exact number of grenades like exploding but i think it's like one second before they explode correct me if i'm mistaken but like imagine a scenario where the normal grenade would like in explode after like maybe one second or some shit meanwhile with the grenade launcher it's like 0 0.7 it's like it's slightly reduced and that's one of my ideas for it is this uh overpowered Probably not, because, like, the weapon itself is not powerful. Like, it's like, here's the thing. Make the gun itself not good, but the effectiveness comes from the grenade launcher itself. And what would be the price tag? Well, I would make, make it slightly expensive than the AUG. It's like, for the CT side, make it at least three... Th no, 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 no. You see, the price tag is where the problem comes in, because the T weapon is cheaper. The same thing goes with the AUG. So... Mm, I'm thinking of maybe 3,400. That's my price for both the CT and Ts. So it is a little bit expensive, but you're getting a weapon that is very good if given to the right person. So, on to the next weapon. This time we're talking about the SPAS-12. You might be thinking, well, this is kind of boring. You might be thinking, well... It may be boring, but here's the thing. The weapon has two functions. Pump action mode and auto, uh, semi-auto mode. For some of you that don't know much about guns, the SPAS-12 has, has two different modes. You can make it into a pump action shotgun, or you can turn it into a semi-auto shotgun. There's like a little button under the, um, on the handlebar where you cock the weapon, or cock the shotgun. There's like a big button where you can either like push it forward to turn it into a fully auto, Oh, no, wait, or like pump action, but if you pull it back when holding that button, it turns it into semi-auto. So the idea I had is to make the shotgun be able to do decent amount of damage both mid-range and close range. And I know some of you are going to say, well, the Nova exists, but hear me out on this. This is going to be a much more expensive shotgun than the rest of them, and I'm thinking of it to replace the M1014. And so, make it so it is. it costs about... $2,300, somewhere around there, but it on fully auto mode, it shoots slightly faster than the M10, like a little bit faster, but deal less damage. But like, make, make it so it, it has more pellets, or it shoots out more pellets, but deal slightly less damage, but have a slightly faster fi uh, rate of fire. And the pump action mode is the same thing. It, it shoots out slightly faster, but deals less damage. That's pretty much it. And what about the range? What should the effective range of the weapon be? Well, I am sort of thinking to be the same, have the same exact range as either the M1014 or the Nova. But I think it's best to have it as the same range as the M1014, just to... Because the Nova, correct me if I'm wrong, has much more better range than the M1014. Although I could be mistaken about that, but please correct me in the comments. But this is my ter personal interpretation of the weapon. A shotgun that, that is capable of both close range and mid range engagements. The fully automatic mode is perfect for, or semi automatic mode is perfect for close range engagements, and the pump action is perfect for mid range engagements. Basically, a hybrid, like a jack of all trades type of shotgun. And now, this is going to be a slightly controversial part. I am thinking of a specific DMR. How about a Dragonov, but with a low zoom scope or have no scope at all? And it would replace the auto sniper on the both CT and T side. 
And now, the idea I had is the SVD, or better known as the Dragunov. And so I had this idea of like having a auto sniper, or like a DMR, that is slight, that is cheaper, but is also effective. I would say the price tag would maybe cost around 3,700, or like somewhere around there, or slightly cheaper. And it has the capability of one-shotting enemies at any range, but also three-shot enemies at almost any range. But the rate of fire is much more slower. There's like a second or like half a second delay before you can shoot again. It's like, it's like bam, bam, bam. It's like, it is slow, but it is quick enough to the point where if you hit them consistently, it is, all, it is capable of fucking shooting them out, and the accuracy would be incredibly effective, even if you hip-fire it. It is going to be one of those sniper rifles where you can hip-fire it without having any issue. The crosser would still be there, but you have like a very, like a, a small zoom scope to like sort of help you with much longer engagements. So this is basically a budget auto sniper or like a budget op, basically. And I know you're going to be saying, well, the scout exists and shit, and to me I say, I don't like using the scout, I like having a DMR instead. And is this going to be better than the auto sniper or like the op? Well, no, not exactly, but like... Actually, wait, now that I think about it, maybe make the price at least like 2,900, but or cheaper. I, I'm not really sure, actually. It's like, the purpose of this is to basically make it where the... You're in a scenario where you want to fight uh, in a much... Like, you want to fight the enemies in a longer distance, but you don't want to, like, spend money on an op or an auto sniper, or you don't like using the the scout. And then there's the dragon off. That's just there for you. And that's it. I don't really have anything else to say for it. I don't really know what the exact damage of it should be. Maybe, like, 45 or some shit, or, like, 49. But that's just me. And now, we're going to be talking about a pistol that I think is very interesting. The pistol I have for choice is a Tokarev, or the TT-33, with an underbarrel shotgun attached to it. And I know you might be thinking, what on God's green earth is just monstrosity? <laughs> Allow me to explain. So, I would say the, T the Tokarev would replace the dual berettas. However, the pistol itself functions the same way as a P250, but as a slightly stronger version. I would make the price tag of the weapon be 550 or like $450. And so it would have the same damage as a... or like slightly higher damage than the P250, but a slightly lower armor penetration than the P250. It would have higher than the USB in the P2000, but it's sort of slightly weaker, to say the least. And the underbarrel shotgun is capable of one-shotting enemies, even on the body. I'm thinking of like having the same damage as the Mac 7 or the Sawed Off Shotgun and the same exact range. It's like you have one shot, one shot of one opportunity, fucking kill me. It's like the purpose of it is to basically make it where if you're in a scenario where there's like an enemy coming in, you have the chance of insta killing them at close range, but you only have three three shotgun shells or two shotgun shells, I should really be saying. So you have few opportunities to kill one or two enemies. But the range is pitiful, so you have to be literally at their fucking face in order to make this work. And the pistol itself would not one-shot the armored enemies. No, sir. It's only the shotgun that has the capability of doing that. And the recoil of the pistol, I'm sort of thinking of having the same as the P2000, but slightly lower, to say at least. It's like, it's the same as the P2000, but slightly smaller and to the left, to say at least. Like, it sort of, like, moves to the left just a tiny bit. And that's my <coughs> idea for the, um, pistol. It's a pistol that has an on-the-barrel shotgun that you can use it as a way to get rid of an armored enemy with one shot and take their weapon. However, if you try to... But you sort of have to, have to, like, switch it between them. And if you do, there will be a loud clicking noise, like a, like a like a button being clicked that the enemies can hear. A metallic click for like a shotgun engagement and like a weak plastic click for in pistol mode. So the enemy can sort of have a good guess of what it is. If they hear like a very heavy metallic tick, then they, they know the enemy they're gonna be facing is on shotgun mode. But if they hear like a really weak plastic tick, then they're on pistol mode, basically. I don't really know how to properly explain it, but bear with me. 
And so the neck the final weapon of choice that I have in my mind is the PP19 Vityas. Now that I think about it, all the weapons that I'm explaining are Russian. <laughs> But fuck you all, I love Russian weapons. I don't like American weapons. Yes, you heard me right. I don't fucking like the M16. I don't like the Scar Age. You could... F I don't care what you people say to me. <laughs> I love Russian weapons more than Amer American weapons. For me, I am an AK guy. I am not an AR guy. So, fuck you all. So, another weapon that I have on my mind is the PP-19 Vityaz. So, basically... It would have double magazines. Like, you know those two magazines that are, like, attached to each other to, in order to, like, allow you to instantly, like, reload to one to another? Yeah, that's the PP-19 VTS. And you might be thinking, well, isn't that a bit overpowered? Yes, and hear me out. Oh, uh, The PP-19 VTS is... It will be the SMG that replaces the P-90. And I would say it would cost around, like, maybe 2,000. Or, no, wait, 2000 what the fuck is wrong with me? Uh, instead of costing 2000 I would say it would, should cost same, somewhere around like 1800 or like $1,750, or even cheaper. And the purpose of this is to allow you to engage more enemies without having any issues. And the first reload you do is fast, but the second reload is like fucking slow. It's like... Whenever you first reload your weapon, the character, like, switches the empty magazine to the one that is full. H hence the, um, like, the two magazines are, like, duct taped together or, like, uh, glued together and shit. So, like, the first reload is fast, but the second reload is 50% slower. So, if you literally just reload out of fucking nowhere, you're literally giving yourself a disadvantage. And how can you tell that you're on your second magazine? Well, I'm sort of thinking to have like a small little duct tape attached to the bottom of the um, of the magazine. So like, blue is where blue is the first magazine, and then the red is the second magazine. You're going to like reload to next, so you can get like an indication of like um, which like if you're on the first magazine or on the second magazine. Basically to make it easier for you to identify whenever you pick it off the ground and shit. And how would the damage function? I would say it would deal slightly less damage than the UMP, but more damage than the MP7, basically. So it deals more damage than the MP7, but less than the UMP, so it's kind of in the middle, basically. But it would shoot slightly slower than the... MP7, but also shoots slightly faster than the UMP. So you have an also SMG that is very good at mid-range, or even close range, apparently. And it has a very solid controllable recoil, in my opinion. And that's pretty much it with my weapon ideas. Are these weapons any overpower? Uh, like, are these weapons, like, poorly thought-out ideas? Most likely, but I don't really care. But these are my personal interpretation and my personal ideas. So in short, you have an underbarrel, you have an assault rifle with an underbarrel grenade launcher that is slight. The weapon itself is slight is weaker, but the but the effectiveness comes from the grenade. You have a DMR or a sniper rifle that is that shoots out slightly slow, but is extremely accurate and you can shoot it from the hip. Basically, a budget auto sniper or a budget op and slightly expensive than the scout. You have a pistol that has the capability of one-shotting enemies at close range, but a pistol itself being much more effective than the P250 or like, you know, the dual Beretas and etc. The pistol itself is alright, I would say at least. And then you have a shotgun that is capable of both close and mid-range, that was a horrible voice crack, you, that is capable of both close and mid-range engagements. And then you also have an SMG that is capable of fighting multiple enemies at once, but the reload time, if misused properly, is going to be very fast and very slow at the same time. Depends on how you treat the weapon. And... that's it. And, uh, it's like, again, the PP-19 VTS replaces the P-90. You're sacrificing a high rate of fire SMG with good penetration and a high ammo capacity for a weapon that is... You know, I'm too lazy to explain it once again. The SPAS-12 replaces the M1014, the Tokarev replaces the P250, the Dragunov replaces the Auto Sniper, and then the Groza replaces both the AUG and the SG-553. 
If you have any weapon suggestions in the comments, please let me know, or if you have any ideas on like how to sort of like rebalance these weapons or like give out your own personal statistics for these weapons, please let me know in the comments. I would love to go ahead and read them out uh, from you. And that's pretty much it. I don't really have anything else to say besides that. And without further ado, goodbye. I'll see you next time.